One Racing is one of the fastest, most highly pressurized and technologically advanced sports on the planet. Behind every competitive Formula One driver is a team of experienced and highly motivated engineers. Since 2015, car manufacturer Infinity, who currently partner with the Renault Sport Formula One team, has operated a program that seeks out the next generation of talented young engineers. There are a lot of good engineers in Formula One. We're not looking for good. We're looking for exceptional. The driver needs to trust that the engineer knows what he's doing. You can be super intelligent, have all the answers, but if you cannot communicate that to the driver, you're no better off. Being able to work under pressure is absolutely vital. That's what it takes to be the best. There's a lot of data, there's a lot of decisions to make, and the clock is ticking. There's nothing more competitive and unforgiving than this challenge. It's going to be interesting. Each academy engineer has earned their place through global regional selections, beating thousands of other university students. For this year, we've got finalists from Asia and Oceania. We've got them from Europe, North America, Mexico. The winner is Shiab. Jaden. Ricardo. Sally. Felix. Alexandros. Caitlin. The winners of each final come and join us in the UK and they work six months with Infinity in Cranfield and six months with Renault Sport Formula One. We don't invent jobs for these young engineers to keep them busy. We embed them in the engineering teams and give them real work. It's a real opportunity for them to show their qualities in the pinnacle of engineering expertise. All right. From a diverse variety of backgrounds, they will be living and working closely together for the next 12 months. Can't wait to start my placement. So the academy uh, in full. Yeah. 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 All right. It's a video. Okay. Now all safely in the UK, the academy engineers converge on what's to become their new home, and they don't take long to settle in. First off, yes, I said I purchased some bedding, so nothing in particular, just whatever I found. I'm kind of a simple person in that terms. I, I don't need a lot of material things. Uh, I'll show something about my room. I quite like this room, I don't know, the symmetry of those two things across the bed and like, got the nice double bed. Well, I didn't pick the curtains. I love shoes. Unfortunately for me, that's what I had to cut out the most. <laughs> a lot of tissues, because I'm kind of, I got some allergies. There's are some papers. Uh, it's finally all feeling real. After work, yeah. Small friends that are, they keep me warm at night. Cooking meat. Go confident in the direction of your dreams. The most difficult bit is the girlfriend, but that's... <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I know it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, it's Disneyland from Ginnering, yeah. I'm just anxious to get started. Go to the kitchen, see what's going on. So, oh. are we cooking dinner? We're gonna do some wraps, so ah. customize your own. Be good for, for everyone with food like, allergies yeah. and everything. <laughs> We have a pretty good bond. We're all engineers and we're passionate for cars. <laughs> so that far one over there is turkey. It's cooked in some taco seasoning. Dig in, guys. Looks really good. Let's go, let's go. So how does it work? Just grab the tortilla. OK. You put what you want in the tortilla. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so technical. Yeah, that's really... It's like a family dinner. My grandparents had a avocado farm. And from a pretty young age, as the whole family picked, I would sit in the four-wheel drive and I'd just stand on the seat. And as long as I could keep it straight. So, Jaden, I'm really interested in your story, but I would like you to give me one of the tortillas first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Know, you. I, I just always enjoyed building stuff. I was 13, 14, I said, well, you know, I put a dot on F1, and, you know, that's where I'm going. They've got to do their day-to-day -day work. They're here to learn. They're here to become professional engineers. I'm here to teach them how to do that. Sometimes I woke up in the morning, I feel that my dream come true. It's unreal. I, w I was a, a nerd from a very young age. Well, I didn't really have an idea of what an engineer would do, but I thought it was cool. 
When I was 14, I went and asked for the, a garage owner if he can hire me. And he told me, well, yeah, but I, I cannot pay you, you know? And I was like, well, I, I just want to learn. I'm definitely living the dream. After only a few weeks into their jobs, the Academy engineers get a chance to seize a unique opportunity. The engineer that shows us that they have real skills and can deal with the pressure are going to win themselves a place on the Renault Sport Formula One team for the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne. The Academy engineers have to face three engineering challenges. The race simulator, the hybrid energy test, and the Barcelona shakedown, with the eventual winner earning their place on the race team at the prestigious Formula One season opener. There's no better prize than that. That is a real gift. The first day of the challenge arrives. So the simulator challenge is there to introduce them to the harsh realities of Formula One. This is a bit out of my comfort zone. Their aptitude of race engineers is going to be put to the test. The Academy engineers have to set up the Formula One car for a dry qualifying at Silverstone. Well, obviously I'm very nervous. There's six other very competitive people. That setup will be tested by Renault Sport Formula One driver, Nico Hülkenberg. Well, a race engineer, he has a lot of, uh, you know, responsibility. So I have a bit of experience with suspension setup, so I think that can give me an edge. It's such an important uh, position in, in motorsport and particularly also Formula One. It's going to be a tough challenge. I think the Academy engineer is going to have to think carefully about the error balance. You know, they have to provide me with the best possible setup. I, I think I couldn't sleep before the race. Ultimately, we're looking for the best lap time and best performance. Seven become four. Only four will progress. I, uh, I'm going to give it my best shot. Let's see what we discover. Thank you very much. The Academy engineers enter the simulator and waste oh, little time in familiarizing Nico. themselves good, good. with Nico. How are you? Alex, nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you, Nico. I'm ready. OK, let's start you. So he needs to complete an outlap before this will start showing the data. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Too much other steering, I guess. Here we go, start the lap. That's when it gets tense. I put too much brake balance in the front, isn't it? This is always a big corner. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. And a spin. You get a redo if he spins up? No, I'm afraid not. Is it he's messed up so much in corner entry because the car is understeering he's that messed up or the oh, setup? I've messed, messed up, up, but it's caused <laughs> him to. He's yeah. having to correct for it. And we have a lap time. 140.334. 135.91. One thirty-eight point five three. Didn't like the feel of the car at all. Very understeery the car, especially yep. in the high-speed corners. Yep. How did it feel in the current times of balance on entry, mid, and exit? Just in a general sense. So lacking a lot of front. There's no front support on, on turn in. I think it's, it's terrible. That's it terrible. Yeah, I agree. I'll get you something better next time. It was a smooth ride. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> It's not terrible. my mistake. It was a terrible lap. Never. I thought his setup was quite good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> OK, folks. So you've had your lap times. You've had your feedback from Nico. You've got five minutes to make your final adjustments. Good luck. The Academy engineers are unaware their calculations will become completely useless once they return to the simulator. So you've made your changes. OK. Conditions have changed. It's raining at Silverstone. OK. And you now have two more minutes. Do we know details of...? It's very wet. So OK. I'm missing something. You're giving me a look like I should be saying something different. Rain means a lot tires. more than just changing tyres. Downforce up, up and brake sensitivity okay. need significant okay. changes to optimise how the car handles. Under this sort of pressure, can the Academy engineers stay focused? This could be a hairy ride, Nico. It's going to be pretty solid. So far, so good. Oh, and there's a spin. Is the engine still running? Nice and safe. You're trying to break his concentration. Ah, uh, no. Sorry. This is not looking too bad at all. And we have a lap. OK. And across the line with a 1 minute 50.10. Sorry, Sally. 
Sorry. We didn't make it round. Good job. Thanks so much. OK. Yeah, that was great. Any downsides? Just the driver. <laughs> All right, thanks, Nico. So... With both simulator runs now complete, okay. Nico and Mark inform the Academy engineers of the result. So the engineers with the fastest lap times are first and fastest was Jaden. Second is Felix. Third is Alexandros. And the final place goes to Ricardo. Good job. <laughs> Congratulations. Good job, everybody. Well done, guys. The four of you are progressing to the next challenge, which is a hybrid energy task. Felix and Alexandros will be team one, and Jaden and Ricardo will be team two. And I've got some packs for you to move you on to the next task. So you've got some homework to do. Good luck with that. Yeah, it's recorded. Yeah, yeah. With briefing packs to hand, there's a long night ahead. Quarter to 11. Yeah, quarter to 11. Challenge. We have to wake up at 6. <laughs> Challenge kicks off at 8.30. It's pretty complex. There. Yeah. Well, this is it's a... all making sense. Right. There we go. Yeah, definitely. Look at the same picture. You should turn it yourself. Yeah. yeah. More like a... Oh. Having had only a few hours sleep, the Academy engineers arrive at Millbrook Proving Ground. This time, the engineering challenge is very real. Hello, welcome to the Q50 Hybrid Energy Recovery Challenge. They've got to absorb all the information we give them in the briefing pack and work as a team to get the best result. We have two professional racing drivers, Jack Aitken and Joyan Palmer. They have to maximize the energy recovery of the vehicle by briefing their driver to utilize the track as efficiently as possible. A hybrid car can harvest energy when coasting downhill or braking and store it in the battery, but uses more energy when accelerating and powering the car uphill. You now have 15 minutes to uh, figure out your cars and your teams and your strategy. They have to finish in a set time, so they have to be careful not to be too fast or too slow. This is something very different for me. Yeah, I'm mean, used to driving at maximum speed the whole time. We can't really mess around. We have to get it quite close to Mark on the first go. The teams have got to be really confident and clear with the instructions they give, so they've got the trust of the driver. If they lose the trust, it's disastrous. You've got to be within 107% of a lap time. Obviously, on a sheet of paper, you don't get much of an impact of what the actual elevation changes and so on are like. This is a great data analysis exercise for a vehicle performance engine. There's a lot to learn, and we've only got two runs, so it's going to be a steep learning curve. After reviewing elevation data and the hybrid regeneration behaviours of the car with their drivers, each team has an opportunity to assess the circuit, making any necessary adjustments to their driving strategy. It's quite an undulating circuit, it's, it's quite technical. The team should be looking for the best spots uh, to recover energy on the track. If you hit the limiter, the car is going to break, and then we do... Yeah. They're looking for areas on the track where they've got to be careful with the throttle. At this point, try to be faster. Also, that they're feathering the brakes to get the most energy out of the system. We're going to be as slow as possible when it's costly to go fast. Personally, I think you're best to coast more than to brake at all. Even under liftoff, it's like still this, regenerating. It regenerates more. We carry the speed. Yeah. You're maximizing your regeneration of energy without compromising your lap time. So instead of braking at the last possible second, you could lift off a few seconds earlier, getting off the petrol engine and letting the system recover energy for the batteries. So this is basically big downhill. This is more flat. Because the circuit is so peculiar, it will be the engineer's job to tell the driver where and when to apply the brake pressure. I think what we're more going to likely fail on is our reference time is being too efficient, because it's a, it's a window and we yeah, don't... Yeah, yeah, we can't mess around too much. These guys, are, they're really switched on. They know their stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, it's about understanding. It's about having that bond. We're working quite well together there. Intelligent couple of guys. We've been looking quite closely at the data, the reference ups they've given us. Driving strategy between engineers and drivers aligned, Team 2 are drawn to make the first run. Set.
with both first runs completed, for one of the teams, there is a problem. So team two went first. Unfortunately, that time didn't count. They were a little bit too slow, so they were disqualified. It would be interesting to see what team one do in terms of taking risks or if they decide to bag on what they've got already. The pressure is huge. That's life at the top end of motorsport. There's always pressure. They've got to grasp the character of the circuit and make the decisions calmly and clearly. Plus 0.5 of a second. With great relief, Team 2 secure a valid time. But in a cruel twist, it's now Team 1's turn to be disqualified. It's a shame because in the end, the changes are like There is an anxious wait while the judges review the data. Of the two valid energy scores recorded, which team has harvested the most and secured a place at the final challenge in Barcelona? As you'll see in the data, it was a, a tough challenge. And as you know, there were many parameters. So the question is, did team two do enough in the second round? All right, gentlemen, the ultimate score was 291 kilojoules for team one and 1,071 kilojoules for Team 2. Congratulations to Team 2. You're going on to Barcelona. I was hoping we were the winners, but uh, the numbers don't lie, you know, and at the end of the day, it's engineering, so the numbers are, are the ones that tell the story. Now, Felix and Alex are competitors like everybody else in the academy, so they'll be fairly sore, but they'll be back at work tomorrow. They've been really impressive and a pleasure to work with. I knew exactly what I had to do on the pressure run. It's incredible to make it through to the next step. To rise to the top two from that group is very humbling. We're here in Barcelona for the first pre-season test. It's the job of the engineers to take that information away and make sure we arrive to Melbourne with the best possible car. Today's challenge for the Academy engineers is to fill the role of performance engineer during the first running of our new car. The performance engineer will work with the driver very closely, looking through all the data, all the information they've got, and try and keep improving the performance. There will be three main tasks for the day. You will follow closely the running of the car during the day. At the end of the day, you will debrief the driver. And finally, you will have to prepare a report on the performance of the car today to deliver back to Enstone. The focus of today is a little bit different. We're not here to extract the maximum performance out of the car. We're really here to start understanding the performance of the car. It will be critical for the Academy engineers today to really pick up on all the details, any problems that happen. We have to use this data to understand how the car behaves and suggest some modification at the end. They're going to have to do some detective work, keeping a very sharp ear on the radio and a sharp eye on what's going on in the garage to make sure they don't miss any of the important points. Winning this challenge, of course, means a lot to me because going to the first GP at the start of the 2017 season is by itself uh, a huge experience. The most difficult thing is probably the element of unknown. I've never been a performance engineer on an F1 team, so who knows what I'm up for. The two finalists are asked to reflect on what stands between them and a place on the race team in Melbourne, each other. I have to say he is really professional. I think Ricardo's going to be quite a formidable competitor. He does perform well under pressure. I saw him in a high car in Barcelona traffic. The prize for them is very big. They're being thrust into an environment that's, that's very new to them. Time for the shakedown. And it's all hands on deck. So coming up to the end of the first time lap. Yeah, 
The Academy engineers listen attentively, straining to hear every detail to inform the conclusions of their report. The engineers working at the track need to be able to evaluate situations, make decisions, take action very, very quickly. OK, getting ready for a longer run now. The role of the engineer is a hugely pressured job, especially when we're out on track. They get a lot of information. They need to deliver a lot of information to us. We're driving flat out on the track, and it's about just giving sharp, concise information that we can digest whilst we're taking a corner at 180 mile an hour. Communication skills are, are really critically important. They go keep pushing one more time lap after this one. They are a big differentiator between the good engineers and the great engineers. With the shakedown successfully completed, the Academy engineers debrief with Nico Hulkenberg. So, I'm going to ask you three questions. Could you describe how you felt the balance and stability of the car from braking, turn-in, entry, mid, and exit across the range of speeds we see at Barcelona? Stability doesn't feel great. I think uh, an area we need to work on from the moment I step on the brakes and then turn in, you know, where, where I roll the car in. The rear seems to be on the nervous side lacking some support there. So talking about the steering feedback, are you happy with that? You feel it good and consistent? You know, once you reach high steering input, steering falls away, it gets very light. They need to uh, think very carefully about how they interpret the answers. I wanted to ask you about braking performance. How did you feel in terms of bite, retardation, consistency? And to test the Academy engineers' capacity yeah. to think on their feet, in an already unnerving situation, they are given the opportunity to ask one extra question. <sighs> Why didn't prepare another one? I think it would be good to explore a little bit more about the ride mm. of the car. So you said that there, there, hang up. <laughs> oh, it's, I thought it was ten, 10 seconds to think it. What did you feel was your main limitation? We're running the car very, very stiff. You know, it doesn't take curbs and bumps very well, um, especially on exit curbs when you're laterally loaded. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. With performance feedback fresh in their minds, Jaden and Ricardo still themselves away to write up their reports. The sun finally sets on Circuit de Catalunya, and Enstone awaits the Academy engineers. The final presentations and judges' decision are all that now stands between them and a place on the race team. Let's see what I can do. So I've done up my report. Um, today I'm going to give you an overview of the shakedown. As I recall, they reacted both fairly similarly in that they, they got the main thing right, which was putting more downforce on the car. Right. But those two were pretty switched on and got straight to it. So uh, I think he just took it in his stride a little bit more. The challenge was to make observations based on what we heard at the radio and also what we observed at the garage. Talking about the driver's feedback, the driver lamented basically a lack of harmony on the car, especially in low and mid speed. Once he sort of got going, mm -hmm. uh, he, he was very good. The driver's first comment about seating was that his seat was too hot. The seat is also too tight around his upper thighs, and the driver believes in longer runs this may cut his circulation. At round four, which was a bit more pushed, he lamented again about the ride being very steep. So obviously endurance is very important that we make sure we don't cut the circulation of our drivers. <laughs> I think the presentation this afternoon was like night and day. It was much more understanding what, what the implications are. There was an issue in the oil pressure being too high, and that was fixed too. The locking complaint may be linked to the plank touching, so it's important that we have a look on the data to see what was causing the locking issue. Yeah, he's running it to the root cause of the problems and starting to link the bits of information together and come to some sensible conclusions. Eavesdropping on the mechanics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. That's my report. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We've come to the end, yeah? Mark was really impressed with what you did. 
in the simulator, how you handle the changing conditions between the two sessions. You know, you picked up things that nobody else did. But I think there's also some areas there where you need to be working. You and Ricardo are both competitors, both very good engineers. But I think today was the day where it really separated you and Jaden. I've been through everything with the judges. It's been really quite tough, I think, on this occasion. Um, there's no, way, no other way of putting this, but um, you've been unlucky. Congratulations, you're going to Melbourne. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andy. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty overwhelming. It means a lot, both on the professional and personal side. To be fair, I'm really happy for Jaden because he deserved this, and I'm happy that he can go back home and see his parents. I've really gone from zero to 100. It's incredible, my first Grand Prix, and it's not even a spectator, it's part of the team. You get to see how everything works, how everyone talks together. Remember to sync eighth gear. How all the communication flows work. The start recharge on as soon as possible. It's a big machine and seeing how all the little parts interact. Just as I was leaving the track, Nico came over to me and he looked over to the technical director and he said, this guy knows a lot about ride, you should get him on the ride case. <laughs> <laughs> so totally proud that he could be part of the team coming out to Australia with his friends looking on and all his family. Uh, we need young, inspiring engineers who come up with bright ideas, you know, who think uh, well and hard and innovative, strong engineers can be a game changer. These engineers could be making a real difference to the way that we're all driving cars in the future. It's a really important program for us and we hope it continues long into the future. It's where you go from now is what's going to make the difference. Sure, you can get an opportunity, but it's how you make the most of that opportunity.